guys, welcome back. Today, we're out at the range with a brand new handgun. We picked it up at Copper. I couldn't resist shooting it, but it is a Walther PPQ M2 Q4 TAC. <laughs> That's a fancy way to say it has a threaded barrel and a slide cut for an RMR or other red dot optic. Here's the case that the gun comes in. Comes with a pistol, a magazine loader, three magazines, have one flush fitting and two extended um, heels on these two other mags. We have three mounting plates. And I've already taken off my rear sight, but it ships with the rear sight on a plate like this that you can remove and put an RMR or something like that on it. It also has replaceable back straps, three of them. There's two in the box, one on the gun. And let's see, it has a threaded barrel, half by 28, has a high vis front sight, does have ambient controls for the slide stop. So you have slide stop on both sides and it's good for either, you can see how it's textured, it's meant for pushing up or pushing down. So it does properly function as a slide release from both sides of the gun. Yeah, it's a very cool little pistol. The PPQ has always been one of my favorite striker fired handguns, which is kind of funny because I really don't talk about it much, but I love the rolling trigger on these things. It doesn't really ever hit a shelf, but it has a nice clean break. It just kind of rolls and breaks, no shelf. And it just, it's conducive to shooting very well. The guns have been extremely reliable. This is not my only one. This is an M2, which means it has the American style magazine release, which you can reverse if you're a lefty, but it does not have a uh, magazine release on both sides. Now the original M1 had the European style, like you would find on a VP9, for example, and it was ambi all the way around. So if you want a truly ambi gun, you may want to pick up the M1. The M2 seems like it's uh, kind of replacing the M1. I see the M2 most likely, or most commonly, I should say, on, on the shelves of various gun stores I visit. The RMR that I've put on here is made by Trijicon, and it is an LED model, so you can adjust for brightness. It does not have tritium in it. And this is a 3.25 MOA red dot sight. So if you leave it on a medium sight setting, uh, brightness setting, you should be able to get about a year or so of battery life out of the gun, so you don't have to turn it off, but you can turn this dot off for long-term storage. So anyway, we're gonna take this gun out of the box today, do a little bit of shooting with it, get it zeroed, and have some fun with it and talk about some of the qualities of the Q4 TAC, M2, PPQ, backwards. <laughs> the nomenclature, I got it backwards, that's a joke. Anyway, all right, let's do some shooting. I generally like Trijicon RMRs for use with tiny little reflex sights like this. The RMR is extremely durable. I've had many of them in my life. This one is from Optics Planet and I don't know, it just seems like I have the best luck with them. Now with the earlier generation of RMRs, you could run into problems where the battery wouldn't make good connection and you'd lose your dot. And I think I've only had that happen to one of my red dot sights, but um, yeah, generally they all work. I've only had to send one back for that and I have probably five or six of them now. I've tried other red dot sights, like this little Leupold Delta Point, but as you can see, I can break them. They're just not as rugged as the RMR. There's a big chip right there out of the lens protector. The only thing I can really ding the RMR for is, and also the Gen 2 sight rectifies the issue with the batteries losing contact. So if you have one of those sights, uh, you could probably get it exchanged or something like that. I don't know. I've never sent one of mine in to be exchanged. I've had one repaired though. But the only thing I can really ding it for besides the occasional bad contact on the battery is that the lens is relatively small compared to other sites like the, like the Leupold, um, and it fish bolts, so it distorts a little bit more. But if you look through the site with both eyes open, as you should, the site offers a really clean sight picture and a bright, crisp dot. This one, again, you can adjust for brightness with the little touch pads on either side of the optic, so you can adjust it to ambient light conditions. It does not auto adjust. All right, so we have some 124 grain LAX ammunition loaded up. Let's go ahead, chamber that first round, and do some shooting at that 
little white target downrange there. It's manufactured by Challenge Targets. All right, let's hit them. Getting a little sloppy there. <laughs> All right, let's shoot him in the head. That was the first 15 rounds. Let's see. Yeah, walking all over his head, that's mostly me. I'm shaking this morning because I've had way too much caffeine and haven't eaten anything yet. And another 15 rounds, the 124 grain stuff. Yeah, this gun is extremely controllable and the trigger is phenomenal. The more you shoot these little PPQs, the better that trigger gets. Just walking back and forth from his head to his chest. So anyway, the gun shoots really, really well, very flat shooting, extremely ergonomic, and man, I should have brought a suppressor out. We'll, we'll save that for another video. I'm loving it. As usual, I love these little Walthers. I've never had a problem with the Walther pistol in my entire life. It's warm out here today, guys. But um, I'm shooting some LAX ammunition. It's a 124 grain ball. And this is some of their bulk pack stuff. And it's new. You can see how nice and clean the ammunition is. I like the ammo cans because you can reuse them later for other things. They do supply ammunition here, free of charge to the channel. There is a discount code down below for 3% off. I think it's for anything in the store, off their already low prices. And I've been shooting their ammunition now since uh, Freedom filed for bankruptcy. Chapter 11, they're still in business and we still have a discount code for them down below. But uh, I've been working with LAX ammo now. We have the uh, magazines, or Walther 15 round mags. And I'd like to thank the guys over at Gun Mag Warehouse for sending us some extra magazines so we don't have to stop and reload as often. They provide us with magazines here on the channel. But I was using them long before they were helping us out with magazines here on the channel. It's pretty much every magazine you want right there. And the prices are generally pretty darn good. So check out Gun Mag Warehouse. All right, we'll load up one more magazine here and we'll go do some more shooting. Using the Uplula, I bought it from Brownells. That's this little handy dandy loading tool. <laughs> these things are worth their weight in gold. I'd like to thank Hickok 45 for turning me onto these. For most of my adult life, I've loaded magazines without the assistance of an Uplula. Then when you use one, I realize how valuable they are. You never want to give them up. Money well spent. Use them for handgun mags. This is pretty much a universal loader. It works with single stack and double stack. And then I use their other loaders for uh, Uzis and AR-15s and everything else. All right, let's do some more shooting. Using a red dot sight for the first time takes a little bit of getting used to. I really do believe that red dot sights like this on defensive handguns will become more accepted as time goes on. In the beginning, these red dot sights were a little bit unreliable, clunky, easily damaged. But over time, these sights, along with the assistance of manufacturers like Glock and Walther and many others, they're starting to integrate the slide cuts so that the, the sights are an integrated package to the gun. It makes it a little bit less clunky it makes it easier to carry concealed. I carry a Walther in the summer months, a PPS with a shield red dot sight. Now I do co-witness with my iron sights. 
this gun is set up for that. But I think just like red dot sights and rifles kind of revolutionized the way that people use rifles today, I think the red dot sight on the handgun will do the same thing eventually. Now using the red dot sight for the first time, everybody has their own way of doing things, right? So for me, first of all, put a red dot sight on a gun you're familiar with. If you shoot a Glock, get an MOS Glock and try that. But otherwise, if you're not familiar with the grip of the gun, like with a Glock, I, tend to, I typically aim a little bit high, muzzle up. If you're not used to the grip of the gun, you may run into some problems where the red dot's not there when you bring the gun up. With the PPS, I'm sorry, with the PPQ and the PPS, I find that when I bring the sight up, it automatically aligns with the target and it's just right there. Now, some have criticized this gun because you have to remove the red dot sight, or I'm sorry, you have to remove the fixed sight from the rear with this plate to put the red dot sight on. And I can understand that. I can understand wanting to have iron sights, but the reality is most gunfights are going to happen at bad breath distances and at seven or closer yards. You still should be able to get solid hits on the center mass of a target, even without sights. I'm about 15 yards from the target now, but when I bring the gun up, the red dot's just right there. It's very easy to acquire, and I can even pull off headshot. So it's just being familiar with the gun that you're using and kind of knowing where your sight picture would normally be when you use that gun. Now, if you get a handgun that's brand new to you, say you've never shot the PPQ before, you're going to have a learning curve on trying to acquire that red dot sight. For me, now, with this gun, it would be impossible because you have to remove the rear sight, but for me, I found that with handguns I'm not familiar with, having suppressor height sights that co-witness through the red dot sight, you can bring the gun up, get your sight picture like you normally would, and then that red dot should be right above the target, or I'm sorry, right above that front sight post. Some folks have criticized me for saying that. Do what works for you. But it is critical that the human interface between you and the gun is there, that you find the gun ergonomic and it naturally points for you so that when you bring it up, that dot's just magically there. Allows for very fast follow-up shots. So I'm a big advocate for the red dot sight on handguns. <laughs> Obviously, and I like the way that they shoot. If you haven't tried one, get to the range with a friend that has one, go to a gun store that rents guns, hopefully they'll have one set up on the red dot sight you can try out, but do something, because if you're carrying a handgun defensively like I am, having that red dot sight on there can actually, actually be a force multiplier just like it is for rifles and become a valuable asset to you in your time of need, should you need your handgun to defend your life. <laughs> Lugers, baby. Gotta love them. Field stripping the PPQ is very simple and straightforward and very similar to other popular polymer frame striker fired pistols on the market. Go ahead and make sure the weapon's empty. I'm gonna lock it to the rear. No magazine. Look inside, make sure your chamber's clear. Let that slide go home, point it in the safe direction, release the striker, grab the top of the slide, pull it slightly to the rear. RMR is handy for this. Then you have two little tabs on either side of the frame. Just pull down on those and push forward on the slide, and it comes off the polymer lower. The gun is hot. It's very hot out here today. That and I've been shooting this little guy, so woo, it's a little bit warm. It does have a polymer guide rod on the recoil spring. You can see how that little blue tip takes a little turn down. It looks like it's broken, but it's not. I've never had one of these break, but it is polymer. You can flex it, but it's a captive recoil spring. To take the barrel out, you have to unscrew the thread protector, then you can just lift the barrel up out of the slide like you normally would. So you have that extra step with the thread protector on the TAC-4, or Q4 TAC. To put it back together, put the recoil spring on its perch, slide the upper and lower together, ah, make sure that thing's all the way seated, slide the upper and lower together, pull it to the rear, and it locks by itself in place. 
So it's very simple and straightforward with the only difference between this and the standard PPQ being the barrel thread protector there, this little knurled device on the end. You have to remove that to get the barrel out. Other than that, identical to the original PPQ. Riding that slide release. Don't do that too often with the PPQ. Very, very fast to use. Love the red dot sights. You can pick the PPQ M2Q4 tack up for 650 bucks. The only downside is you have to remove that rear sight. That's gonna cause a problem for some. For me, it's not that big of a deal. And then uh, the red dot sight. If you're gonna use this for defensive purposes, you're gonna to wanna to invest in a high quality sight like the RMR, and that's gonna set you back as much as the gun itself. So it's an investment to pick up a handgun like this and put a red dot sight on it. Even the affordable red dot sights are gonna cost you 300 bucks or so that are of good quality. All right, guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, a great way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There is a link down below. Please follow that link and check out the incentives that we offer those that choose to support us. Also, another great way to support us, check out ForgeFromFreedom.com. It's our online store. We have a lot of shirts like this for sale that are kind of funny. We haven't played cowboys and gun grabbers yet. Please swing by and check it out. It's a great way to support us here at the Military Arms Channel. And last but not least, check us out at CopperCustom.com, which is our online store. Guys, thanks for watching us. Thanks for 10 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.